We are back with another tutorial today and this time for the Filsa cardigan. So this is a really simple raglan style cardigan with an easy lace work pattern at the bottom. To knit this, we're going to need two skeins of DK weight yarn. I've chosen the San Niskarn alpaca today and the pattern recommends drops merino extra fine, which gives you 105 meters per 50 grams. So as long as you're choosing a yarn around that weight, you're going to be good to go. The gauge for this cardigan is 21 stitches by 28 rounds. If you'd like to knit a gauge swatch beforehand, make sure you block your gauge swatch before you measure it to make sure that you're going to get the proper measurements. The needles used today are the US 6 four millimeter needles and you can use a 24 inch or 32 inch cord. If you'd like to knit the sleeves on DPNs, you can also do that, but I like to do mine on Magic Loop. We're also going to need some stitch markers. I have four here. We're going to need four buttons, uh, a ruler or a measuring tape, some scrap yarn, and a tapestry needle. If you don't have all of these things, you can make by without a lot of them. If you don't have stitch markers, for instance, you can just tie some yarn in a little circle with a knot, and that can be your stitch marker. Um, if you don't have a tapestry needle, you can even thread your yarn through the stitches by hand when we get to the sleeves. There's lots of ways around it. These tools just make your life a little bit easier, but don't fret if you don't have all of these things. You can still make this cardigan today. So let's get started. I'm going to be showing you how to make the zero to three month size in this video, which is the smallest size of the cardigan. If you'd like to knit a bigger size, we have zero to three months, uh, three to six months, six to nine months, and nine to 12 months. You can find my Ravelry page linked below and you can purchase the pattern there. But to knit the smallest size, you don't need to purchase anything. You can just follow along with this video. We'll get started with the long tail cast on. For any of the techniques mentioned in this video, I'm going to have full length tutorials listed below in case you need it broken down just a little bit slower. So we'll start by making our slip knot. You can make any slip knot you know how to do. And I will get this onto my needle here. And we're going to cast on 50 stitches with the long tail cast on method. Once I've got my 50 stitches cast on, I'm going to spread them out along the needle and cord, making sure not to have them twisted. We wanna make sure they're all facing the same way. So now we're going to turn our needle and we're going to start working on the wrong side. Now the neckline of this cardigan is in garter stitch, so we don't need to purl across the wrong side, we need to knit across the wrong side. These first uh, row of stitches are always a little bit tough to budge. It'll get easier to knit after this. So just stick with it after this first row and it'll get a lot easier. When you get to this last stitch here, make sure you're knitting nice and tight. We don't want to pull on that stitch too hard or we're going to create a little bit of a loose edge. So just in through here, not pulling on it, nice and tight there. All right, we've just finished our first wrong side row and we are going to turn our work, again making sure our stitches are not twisted. And once again, we are going to knit all the way across this row now. I've now knit all the way across this right side row and I am turning it once again and we are back on the wrong side row. So now what we're going to do, we're finished knitting our neckline here. So we're going to start working on the button band. So what happens now is we've just finished this, but we need to keep making sure we're knitting in garter to make this garter button band go the whole way down. So we'll be knitting stitches and then making sure we garter. So that means knit on the right side and the wrong side of the work. I'll show you how that works here. So we are on the wrong side, but we're still going to knit 
the first three stitches. All right. Now that we've knit those first three stitches, we're going to purl across until we get to the last three stitches. And then we need to make sure we knit those because those are still going to be in garter the whole way down. So let's switch to purling our stitches now. All right, so we've made it back to our last three stitches. So we're gonna switch to knitting these. and spread our work out and turn. So now we are on the right side again. You'll now be able to tell the right side and the wrong side apart because the right side has these knit stitches and the wrong side will be purl stitches. So we're going to start setting up for our raglan increases and we're going to need our four stitch markers now. So let's start by knitting those first three garter stitches. And now we are going to knit eight. After we knit eight, we're going to take a stitch marker, put it on the needle. Next, we're going to knit six. Take another stitch marker on the needle. And now we will knit 16. Take another stitch marker on the needle. Next, we will knit six again. Final stitch marker, and now we will knit eight. And here you'll see we have our last three stitches, which are our garter button band stitches. So we're going to knit those, knit three. Great, so we've just set up for our raglan increases and I'm gonna show you what's going on here. So we'll put the cardigan upside down because that's where we're at. So these stitches here, actually we need to be this way. These stitches here line up with these stitches. These six stitches here are going to be for our sleeves. This back section is for the back of our cardigan, another sleeve, and then another front section. So we'll be increasing to make it go out like this, and that's how we're gonna get more stitches on our needle. All right, so we are back on a wrong side row, and all we're going to do now is knit these first three stitches we always knit these first three stitches unless we're making the buttonhole. And now we're going to purl all the way across to the last three stitches, just slipping the markers. We're not going to do anything with the markers unless we're on the right side. Just slipping my marker over. Keep going all the way to the last three stitches. At our last three stitches here, we are knitting. All right, we finished the wrong side row. Once again, we're going to turn and we are on the right side row. Now this is where we're going to start our raglan increases. So let's begin by knitting our first three garter stitches. Now we're going to knit across until we get to one stitch before the marker. When we get to one stitch before the marker, we're going to do something called make one right. We're going to pick up this strand of yarn here and put it on the needle 
facing this way. I like to loosen it up by just kind of pushing my thumb on it and we're going to go in through that strand we just put on the needle and knit and that's going to make a stitch there. So that was our make one right. We're going to knit, slip the marker and now we're going to make one left. So we're going to pick up this bar and instead of putting it on this way, we're going to put it on backwards. So I'll show you again. For the make one right, we put it on this way, but for the make one left, we're going to put it on the back there. So now we're going to knit through that stitch and we have our make one left. So again, we're going to knit until one stitch before the marker. This is where we're going to do our make one right. At the right side of the marker, it's always gonna be make one right. At the left side, it's always gonna be make one left. So we will make one right. Just getting some room there. Knitting that. Knit that stitch, slip the marker, and now we'll make one left. If you need to spend some more time on this technique, again, there's going to be a video down below and you can practice your make one right to make one left and then come on back to this video. One stitch before the marker make one right the make one stitches should always feel a little bit awkward they're a little bit tight on the needle because they're not a real stitch yet so don't worry if they're not the most fun to knit you just kind of got to get through them okay one stitch before the marker Make one right. Oh, I picked up some extra strands of yarn there. There we go. Slip the marker, make one left. And now we'll knit to the last three stitches. And we will still knit these three garter stitches here. Okay, so we've just started our two step repeat that we're going to use to do these raglans. So that was step one. Step two is going to be to turn our work. We will always knit these first three garter stitches and then we're going to purl across slipping the markers. So this is step two of the raglan increases. So knit three, purl across, slipping the marker, and purling until we get to the last three stitches. I'm at the last three stitches and I'm going to knit them. All right, so we've just finished our wrong side row. So with the increase row we did, and then the wrong side row we did, that completes one step of our raglan increases. We're going to do that 11 times total. So that would be 10 more times because you just did those two rows once. We will start by knitting our garter button band here. And now we're going to knit until one stitch before the marker. Okay, we're going to make one right. Picked up an extra strand there. Knit one, slip marker, make one left. Knit until one stitch before the marker. Make one right, knit one, slip marker, 
make one left. And continue that until the last three stitches. All right, we're at the last three stitches and we're going to knit them. So that was row one. We're going to turn. This is row two. Row two of the second set of increases that we're doing. So again, for the second row, we are going to knit our three garter stitches. Purl all the way across while slipping the markers until the last three stitches and we knit them. Great, so now we have just finished our wrong side row. So that means so far what we've done is we've done one row of increases, one row of wrong side, another row of increases, another wrong side, which means we've done two steps of the raglan increases. We need to do that 11 times total. So we've already done two out of 11. That means I'm not very good at math, but we have nine more. <laughs> so we need to go increase, wrong side, one, increase, wrong side, two, all the way up until nine more times, which is going to give us 11 increase rounds. We'll meet back up when we're done that. One thing to note, as we're working down our cardigan, we're going to be making a buttonhole every inch and a half. So I've knit to about an inch and a half here, and I'm going to, on the right side, create my buttonhole. What I'm going to do is knit one, yarn over, knit two together. All right, so that yarn over is going to end up being the hole for the button. And when we get back to this on the wrong side, you're just going to knit that yarn over stitch like normal. So these are now our three garter stitches. So every inch and a half, you need to be making a button hole. Here we are now that I've completed my 11 steps of my two rows and we have our raglan increases here. You're starting to see this really beautiful line. I just love how raglan increases look. And we have our two um, buttonholes so far, about an inch and a half apart. You don't have to be too perfect with that. If you are a bit of a perfectionist, I find um, you get about six of these pearl bumps before each uh, buttonhole. I just kind of eyeball it though. So now that we've done that, we need to measure our work and we're trying to get to four inches before we start the separation for the sleeves. I'm just a little bit off here. I need about not even a centimeter. So I'm just going to go back and forth one more time and I'm not going to do any increases. So I'm just going to slip these stitch markers even when I'm knitting across the right size. I'm not increasing anymore. I'm just trying to get a little bit more length here. So you're going to keep going back and forth until you've got four inches of knitting here. One more thing to note as we're adding length to our body here, we should have a certain amount of stitches in each of these four panels here. So first in this front panel, we should have our three garter stitches. And then along the front here, we should have 19 stitches before the stitch marker. In this first sleeve, we should have 28 stitches. Along the back panel, we should have 38 stitches. For the second sleeve, another 28 stitches. And then in this front panel, another 19 plus three. Now that our work is measuring four inches, it's time for the fun part. We're going to put our sleeve stitches on hold using some scrap yarn and a tapestry needle or darning needle. So how we're going to do that, we'll knit across our first garter stitches as well as our front section here, our front 19 stitches. So we'll just start knitting. Okay. 
as we come to our first stitch marker, we will take that off. And we're going to put these stitches here, our sleeve stitches, on hold. So you can thread your tapestry needle. And start slipping these sleeve stitches onto the needle and thread. All right, we've come to our second stitch marker, so we can take that off. We're going to pull the scrap yarn through all of our sleeve stitches and take off our darning needle. And I'm just going to tie a little bow here. You can tie a knot, however you'd like to secure this yarn. I'm gonna double tie it just so we don't lose any of our stitches. And there we are. So our sleeve stitches are now on hold. The next thing we're going to do is cast on some new stitches. I'm going to use the backwards loop method. So I'm going to take my needle and my yarn. My yarn is over top of my thumb and I'm just going to slip on a new stitch there. I'm gonna do this six times. All right, so we've added six new stitches under the sleeve. And from here, we can just keep knitting across the back section. We've come to our third stitch marker here. We can take that off. We're back at the second sleeve. So we're going to now take our darning needle and thread once again, and put these sleeve stitches on hold. So we're just slipping all of these stitches onto the needle and thread. I've come to my final stitch marker and I'm going to take that off. I'm going to pull this through here, make another bow. All right. So now those sleeve stitches are on hold as well. And we need to cast on six stitches once again using the backwards loop method. And now we will continue knitting across this final section here. All right, you can see here, both of my sleeves are on hold. I've knit all the way across. This is when you can see it really start to look like a cardigan. What we're going to do now is count all of these stitches. You should have 94 stitches in total. So that's including our three garter stitches on each side. That's including our six new stitches we've cast on under each arm, and then including all of these stitches here. So 94 in total. Once you've counted all of those stitches, we're going to continue knitting and purling. So knitting on the right side and then purling on the wrong side, all the way until our work measures 2.5 inches from the underarm. So from here, we want our work to measure 2.5 inches. Don't forget to keep knitting the garter stitches on each side. We're always going to have that button band, as well as remembering to add a button hole every inch and a half. Okay, so as you're going down, knitting your 2.5 inches, keep that button band and buttonhole going. I have added in my 2.5 inches to the body and we're ready to start the lace work now, which is an eight stitch repeat. So it's nice and simple. What we're gonna do is just knit our three garter stitches as usual. And then to start off, this isn't part of the repeat, we're just going to knit one. All right, so that one stitch is out of the way. Now this is where we start the repeat. We are going to knit two together, yarn over, knit six. All right, again, we're going to knit two together, 
yarn over, knit six. Knit two together, yarn over, knit six. All right, we're going to repeat that repeat until we get to the last 10 stitches. So when you're at the last 10 stitches, we'll meet there. Now that we're at the last 10 stitches, we have an incomplete pattern repeat. So what we're going to do is knit two together, yarn over, knit five, and then we'll just knit our three edge stitches. All right, so we've just completed our first lace work row. Now all we're going to do is turn our work, making sure we knit our garter edge, pro all the way across, knitting our edge again, and then we'll get ready for the next lace work row. When you come to these yarn overs, you can just purl them as usual. Back on the right side here, we're going to start with our garter, three stitches. Right next, we're going to go right into the lace work pattern. So there's no knit one as there was last time. So we'll go ahead and knit two together. Yarn over, knit six. Knit two together, yarn over, knit six. Continue that all the way down until you get to the last three stitches. And then you're just going to keep knitting for your garter band at the last three stitches. Purl all the way back across, and then I'll explain what to do next. Back on the right side, we're really starting to see this lace work start to show itself. For these next two rows, all we're going to do is knit across the right side and purl across the wrong side. So there is no lace work on these next two rows and we'll meet back at the right side. We are ready for our next row of lace work, starting with our knit three. Next, we're going to knit four. So that isn't part of the repeat section. So just forget about that knit four. Now we are going to knit two together. Yarn over, knit six. Knit two together. Yarn over, knit six. Go ahead and continue that until the last seven stitches. Come to the last seven stitches. I'm going to knit two together, yarn over, knit two, and then knit my three garter stitches. All right, we're going to purl back across and then our last lace work section will be at the right side. Back at the right side for our final lace work section, knitting three garter stitches. Now we're going to knit three Again, forgetting about those first stitches and starting with our lace work repeats again. So knit two together, yarn over, knit six. You're going to do this until the last eight stitches and we'll stop there. Here at the last eight stitches, we're going to Knit two together, yarn over, knit three. And then we have our final three garter stitches here. 
All right, we're almost at the end. So for the last three rows, we're just going to purl across, knit across, and then purl across. Back on the right side row after that, we will get ready for our bind off. We are finally ready to bind off the body of our cardigan. We're going to be using an I-cord bind off today. So first thing we're gonna do is cast on three new stitches, just using that backwards loop again. And here we go. So we're going to start by knitting two. These first couple stitches can be tricky to get off here. So knit one and then knit two. The next stitch we're just going to slip purl wise. So I'm going to slip if I can get it. <laughs> slip that stitch onto the needle here and then I'm going to knit one more. All right, so I have four stitches over here. Now I'm going to bind off that one stitch over top of that one here and pass these three back. And we're just going to continue that pattern. So we're going to knit two, slip one purlwise, knit one, and pass that stitch over. Slip all of those stitches back, knit two, slip this stitch, knit one, pass this stitch over, and slip all three of these back. Knit two, slip purlwise, knit one, pass this stitch over, slip these three back. I'll do that one more time. Knit two, slip one purlwise, knit one, pass that stitch over, and slip those three back. So we're just going to keep doing that. You can see our eye cord is really beautiful and starting to come into view there. We're going to do that all the way down until the last three stitches. So we've come to our final three stitches here. I'm going to break my yarn, grab my tapestry needle, and I'm just going to pull the yarn through each of these stitches like that, and then when we're ready, we can weave in this end at the end of the project. So there is our I-cord bind off. Once this project is blocked, it will stop to roll up. And we can move on to our sleeves now. All right, I have my sleeve stitches here and my needle. I'm going to start by placing these stitches back onto the needle, making sure I'm not picking up anything other than these stitches that we put on hold. So just going all the way around until we have all of those stitches on the needle. All right, my stitches are all on the needle. I'm going to break this yarn and pull it out. Now what we need to do is split these stitches evenly. So we put 28 on hold. So I'm going to put 14 stitches on each side. Just going to pull the cord through here. And split these evenly. So we're set up to work magic loop. Again, there will be a tutorial linked below if you need to spend some more time on magic loop before we get going. But the first step here, we're going to be picking up stitches along the underarm here. So this is where we had cast on those six new stitches using backward loop method. Now we're going to pick up these stitches. So I'm actually going to, if my, my needles are facing me like this, I'm going to pull off my back set of stitches and let those just rest back here. And then I'm going to start by picking up three stitches under here. So I have my yarn. You can see one, two, 
three. That's what I'm going for here. All right, so I'm going to go in here between these stitches and I'm going to pick this up and I've grabbed a stitch there. I'm going to go in through the next, oh, looks like I've actually gone in between the stitches. So I want right here. I'm going to pick this up here. All right, so now I've picked up the right stitch. Now I want this one in here. Okay, and the final one I want is right here. Okay, so that's the three stitches I need to pick up there. Next, you'll see there's a bit of a gap here. So it helps if you can pick up this stitch and then make one through the back loop. So I'm just gonna put this bar on here I'm gonna go in through the back loop here and just make another stitch. So in total, I've picked up four here along this side and now I'm going to knit across needle one. All right, so there's the end of needle one. I'm going to turn my work, pull this needle back through and now I will start to work across needle two. I'm going to pick up that stitch that's just in the bar here. And now I'm going to go in and pick up three more stitches. So the last one I picked up was over here. I'm going to start with this stitch right here. So here's one. Here's two. And here's three. Okay, so now I've picked up all six stitches that we cast on underneath, plus one extra in the sidebars, just to close up the underarm hole that we're going to get at the end of the sweater. This helps close it up a little bit. You might still have a tiny little hole, but it's not going to be a big deal. All right, so keeping that end on the inside here, I'm going to set my needles back up. Okay, I have my sleeves all set up and ready now. That part was a little bit fiddly, but that's as complicated as it gets. So now all we need to do is just knit down these sleeves until they measure 4.5 inches. So watch this first stitch here because it has a loose end. Try not to pull on it and we can go in and tighten that back up by going inside, grabbing that and then pulling a little bit. You don't need to pull it too tight. All right, so I'm knitting across my needle one stitches. All right, turning. Sliding these back in. And knitting across needle two. All right, turning our work. We always readjust our needles in between magic loop and slide them back on there. All right, so we're just going to continue that until we have 4.5 inches from this underarm. All right, so 4.5 inches is where we're going to stop before the rapid decreases. My sleeve is now measuring 4.5 inches from the underarm, so we're ready for the rapid decreases. I'm going to take my yarn here and we're going to start by knitting three, knitting two together. All right, so knitting one, two, three, and then knit two together. Knit one, two, three, knit two together. You see for this one here, we've run out of more stitches. So we're just going to continue on pulling these stitches onto our needle. All right, so we just left off with the knit two together. And we end here with a knit three. 
All right, so that finishes off our rapid decreases and we are ready for our bind off. We're going to bind off this sleeve again using the I-cord bind off. It's going to start out the same way, but at the very end, it's going to finish off a little bit different. So we'll start by getting those three new stitches on the needle. We're going to knit the first two stitches And then we're going to slip the third one, knit one, and slip this stitch over. Pass these three back. Going to knit two, slip one, knit one, pass over, and slip these three back without picking up any <laughs> strands of yarn there. Knit two, slip one, knit one, pass over, and we're going to do that all the way around. Here we are at the last three stitches. I'm going to break my yarn, leaving a little bit of a tail, don't need too much. And I'm going to get my darning needle here. So now what we need to do is join up these stitches with the beginning stitches of the I-cord. So we're going to thread our yarn through our darning needle. And this would be a lot easier actually if I had <laughs> this on double pointed needles. I'm going to have to pull this long cord all the way through here. There we go. And I'm going to slip this first stitch off. All right, now I'm going to be looking for the first V, the first V in this I cord. So I see it over here. I'm going to go in and grab the two legs of this V and then pull to attach those together. Oh, and I've lost, <laughs> I've lost my um, needle here. So that is what not to do. I'm just gonna put that back through. <laughs> so I'm pulling that through and that has attached. So the next step here, we're going to go in through that first leg of the first stitch that we dropped off grab it and then also grab the leg of this stitch here and pull it off. So we're bringing those off together. All right, next we're going to keep that stitch on the needle and find the second V here. So our first V was in back here. Now it looks like our second V is right here. So I'm going to go in here and bring those together. So you see we're starting to close that off. And again, I'm going to go and grab the last stitch I pulled off here and bring it together with this one. Pull that off. And now I'm going to go in and grab this first V. I'm going to pull that tight. And as you can see, we have joined that I cord and everything looks pretty seamless there. All right, you can bring this through to the wrong side for now, and then we can weave in this at the end here. So I'm just gonna take that off my needle, leave that alone for now, and there is our finished sleeve. You're going to knit the second sleeve exactly the same as the first one. So you're gonna start by picking up those stitches here on the needle, grabbing the six stitches down here with one extra in the bar, knitting 4.5 inches and doing that exact same rapid decrease and 
I cord bind off. Exactly the same as the first one. And then that's it. We're gonna be doing our finishing touches after we've finished that. So go ahead and knit that second sleeve. All right, I've given the cardigan just a quick little steam block. I would recommend doing a full wet block before you put on the buttons. I just wanted to do this for you on camera before I go ahead and wet block my finished cardigan. Um, one thing I want to show you is how to close up these little underarm holes if you have any. So we're going to take the thread that was already attached just from where we attached the new yarn for the sleeves. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make a duplicate stitch here. So just going to find a stitch and go up through the center of it, bringing that yarn through. And then I'm going to go ahead and close off that stitch and go back in where I started. So right there you can see that we've closed up that little gap and I'm going to weave in my ends here. I like to just go in through the top half of some purl bumps. I chose three there. I go up back up through three more And one more time. And then I can just cut that yarn off here. Leave a little bit of a tail for when you block it. It might grow a bit. And the last thing we're going to do is just attach a few buttons. I've gone ahead and found a thinner tapestry needle. My other one wasn't fitting through the holes of this button. So you could either find buttons with bigger holes if you're having the same problem or a thinner tapestry needle. So we're going to line our button up with the first buttonhole. Just go in through the back. and through the front. I'm going to see if it'll fit one more time for me to do that. Yep, we can get it through there. One more time. So I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to do two knots in the back here. And that's it. You can just cut that yarn off there and you're going to add three more buttons matching them where the buttonholes go. And there we have it, our finished Filsa cardigan. I just love the look of the details on this sweater. It is so cute. I hope you enjoyed making it along with me. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on Instagram. I'm Kabora Knits on Instagram, and you can email me at kaboranits at gmail.com. Happy to answer any additional questions that you have. And also please share your work on Instagram and Ravelry. I love to see the finished products. You can tag hashtag Filsa Cardigan to share your work and I'd love to see it. Thanks everybody. Happy knitting.